Okay, guys, it's finally time to get to test our English opening. We already covered it. We even went over some of the typical end games. I know it was for the Sicilian defense, but don't forget, you could get the same pawn structures in the English opening. So I wanted to play just a couple games against engines. That way you see it at different level. I wanted to play Fide Master uh, James Canty, and uh, also we could test it against an 1800 player. So we get both 1800. I wanted to do 1500, but I think 1800 would be a good point and also the 2300. So we haven't played many of these uh, engines. I think we had a game against um, Alexandra. We had one against, uh, I think it was, well, there was, there was someone else that we played, but today let's give it a try. Let's start with the 1800 engine. Here we go. I want to play as the white pieces and I want to make it challenge, right? So play. And guys, I'm gonna try to explain the, the moves and ideas but the opening itself, you should be more than familiar with it. So we got c4, knight f6, and now I'm going to go knight c3. Don't forget, we're, go we're going to try to get into the Botvinnik variation of the English opening. Now I see e6, this might be an indication that they want to do e5, right? So if I go e4, d5, pawn takes, pawn takes, I don't know, I don't want to get into that. So whenever I see this variation, I'm going to go straight into g3. Still very flexible anything could happen you see they did d5 and then from here if you play let's say the catalan you could just do something like d4 and transpose into it if you wanted to myself i do not know much about the catalan so i'm gonna go c takes d5 and then i could do bishop g2 and that's it i got my fianchetto now guys after i did that i'm going to continue with d3 nothing has changed but then they did d4, but if they had just um, continued with just development, I'm going to go knight f3, castle, nothing happens, right? So you need to be able to adapt to it. So even though I told you all of those cool ideas uh, that Botvinnik taught us with the pawn storm, well, sometimes you just cannot do it. So d3, I mean d4, I'm going to bring my knight to the center. If they take, I take with my bishop, keeping my pawn structure healthy. That's it. I do not need to be an expert guys to play these systems even though we did not cover them so i'm gonna put my bishop back to safety and i wanted to say something here very important even though my bishop my knight moved twice already in the opening my bishop same thing this is gonna be the third time i move it it's not a big deal because my opponent is moving pawns if i were wasting time with my pieces and my opponent would be developing the bishops the knight castling then that's a different story but pawns that's just creating weakness, weaknesses for the most part. So bishop goes back to g2, and now bishop e6. You see, now this is a developing move. So knight f3, my knight. I know we talked about the knight coming to e2, but it just doesn't make sense here, guys. So I'm going to go knight f3, and next thing you know, I'm going to put my king in safety. Bishop b4, only one move here that makes sense. Bishop d2, and again, I'm not concerned about this move. I'm trading one of my bishops, but I'm trading it for one of their bishops. So it's not like... I'm giving up my pair of bishops just like that. All right, so now time to castle. And at this point, it is very important that we remember the typical end games that we talked about. On lesson 150, I think 151, I told you that for the Sicilian, the English opening, because of the pawn structure that we have, we want to play on the queen side. So I'm thinking of something like rook uh, f2c1, and not this rook, but the other rook, because that's what I'm going to be playing. I'm even thinking of before. So this is actually very attractive to me, of course. There are moves like knight e5, not only centralizing the knight, but opening up my powerful bishop that I need to consider. So at this point, we're going to look at our candidate moves. So I have knight e5, rook f to c1, and I have b4, right? So I'm going to start with rook f to c1. I'm thinking they're going to do something like knight d7, developing and taking care of the pawn easily. Now, knight e5, they could do bishop d5. I'm probably going to have to take, they take back, Knight c4, b5, not so clear. I don't think I like my knight going around like that. And don't forget, even though my knight is going to be in the center, it is not going to be defended. So I'm not so crazy about that move. Even though I could do knight e5, bishop d5, f4, but they could always challenge my knight. So how about, hmm, how about b4 right away? What could they do about that? Now if they go knight d7, I take, knight takes, Rook f to c1, and I'm sort of putting pressure with tempos. And I like, again, I like the idea 
that my rooks are going to have open lines to attack. So we're going to check this out with the engine, the other engine. <laughs> but I think before is at least an interesting move. Now, what if I go before and they go c4? Okay, take, take, and then this is hanging. Well, with the knight. All right, so let's give it a try, guys. I like the idea. There we go. I'm going to take. Ah, they didn't take back. You see, they didn't take back because then my pieces get active at the expense of that knight. Okay, so now I'm taking a look at this position and one more time, I need to look at my candidate moves. I'm really looking into rook f to c1, same idea, this time to protect my pawn. I'm looking at putting pressure on d4. So queen b4 comes in, putting pressure on d4, putting pressure on b7 and defending the pawn. So I like that one. So queen b4, I don't think they could defend the pawn. So maybe something like rook c8. I take, I like that move. So I'm just going to go ahead and just put pressure through the open lines. And guys, look, they are already trying to get to my king. They know they are in trouble. The only, positionally, if we take this to an end game, this is going to be easy for the white pieces, right? So they're trying to complicate the game. But my king is really safe. We know that this pawn structure with the fianchetto is one of the safest for the king, especially if we still have the fianchetto bishop. But Besides that, I got my knight, my rook, I should be fine. Now, should I take with the knight or should I take with the queen? And this is a very good question for you. Now, I know in my mind that if I'm winning material already, like this is going to be my second pawn up, I want to simplify the game. So there we go. It's like they just don't care. So I'm going to take the queen. Queen's off the board. This means my king is safe. And now time to do d4. I'm not crazy about taking on a 4 because that's going to be doubled pawns or rather keep this guy that is healthy. So the question is, how do I do it? I have my d4, I have pawn to d4, or I like activating my rook. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to go d4, guys. Let me allow the little pawns defending defend each other, and I should be fine. Hmm. Now, very interesting move, but I'm going to go... How about 95? They take. I take. Hmm. Again, any simplification is going to be good for me. So I'm going to go 95. Notice that I did not calculate a lot there. But if I'm playing this in a real game, I want to double check, guys. So look at this. I'm, I was calculating if they had taken the pawn, I take the pawn with the fork. They get my rook. I'll probably take back. And then I'm going to get one of the rooks no matter what. And the more we simplify the game... The closer we get to the end game, the easier it is to convert my advantage. So simplification, should I take? Well, I'm going to say, hmm. anyways, if I don't take, they're going to take me. You know what? I don't, I don't feel like taking and activating their knight. So let me activate my rook. Hmm. Hmm. What to do, what to do? Mm -hmm. Hmm. What to do, what to do. Or should I just take this pawn? I mean, it's a free pawn after all. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take this pawn, guys. And if we die, we die, but I'm going to get a free pawn right here. It's free. Look, this is double pawns, but it, it comes free at the end of the day. Now, I'm going to go E3 just to protect everything. And now they have to checkmate me if they want to win this game. All right, so... Rook b1, bishop a2, and then I take on b7. Hmm. I don't want to risk it. Look, doing this move is going to give him a pass pawn. I don't think that pawn is going to make it anywhere, but I just don't want to give him anything. So maybe I should just take, followed by rook. Yeah, you know what? Hmm. Let me go rook b1. I would even there to just go <laughs> rook f to b1 but it looks too ugly so let me go rook a to b1 they just don't care now can i take on b7 nope uh this knight is going to d2 i have to be careful with with look tactics guys tactics in the air i need to be i need to be careful with that so what can we do about that i like the simplification idea but then rook b2 you know what don't forget, when we simplify the game, the rule of simplification, it's not only about what we take, but it's about what we have left on the board. And I feel fine about this. I'm going to be left with a very powerful knight in the center. So now I think I should be able to get some, some advantage here. So 
So e4, I want to make it work. So let me go f3, e4, d5, it's just going to be too much, guys. Oof. Final simplification, we're, we're up three pawns. Like, it's hard to see a scenario where we are, where we are in trouble. Hmm. Should we? Something that I forget sometimes, <laughs> something that I forget sometimes is to not play mechanically. Like, I know to simplify the game, but sometimes... If you have a way better piece, it is a good idea to keep it. I mean, to, yeah, to keep it. So take or just rook d1, e4, d5. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Rook d1, e4, Who knew what to do, huh? Or I could do rook b6. Very interesting, too. I like rook b6. I could do knight c6, pawn takes rook b6. Then I'm thinking something like rook c8. And I could bring my rooks to the seventh rank, but let me let me start with let me start with rook b6. Hmm. All right, guys. So this is an 1800 player. I I doubt that a real like a human 1800 human would let me do all of this, but let's give it a try. Let's see. Now look at this. It's just too many pawns. Let me take the uh, the opportunity to put my rook on the seventh rank. They said no. Well, I'm going to simply just uh, trade pieces. That's it. This is just too easy. Now, should I go c6? Let them go here or bring the rook? Let me activate the rook. All right now, it doesn't matter how many pass pawns I have. You don't know how many games I've lost because I forget about my king. So let me activate the king. It's not going to hurt. I have time to do that. Now, look, this is more like what a real human would do. They're looking for counterplay. So what do I do? I'm going to take that away from them. Rook c2. There's no rook coming to the seventh rank. And now king e3. That's it. No counterplay. e5, guys, this is just too much. Okay, now f5. Yeah, let me go c6. My rook is behind the c pawn. d6. And I'm pretty sure that any of you guys would finish this easily. So now I could do d7 or c7. If I do c7, they could sort of create like a blockade. If I go d7 and then c7, I don't think they could do anything about that. And again, we're, we're winning by four uh, four pawns, guys. So let me see. If I go c7, king takes, promote. Yeah, this should be an easy end game, anyways. Do I have to go for it? <laughs> um, I don't think I have to. So let me calculate that one more time. c7, take, queen, take, take, king takes. And you know what? Unnecessary, but I'm just going to go for it. Now I could go, yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I could go uh, I could go e6, then king here, e7. Ooh, this is going to be nice. There we go. Deflection. I was hoping to just, or planning to just trade and go for the end game, but that one was going to be easier. So there we go. Now, this should be a piece of cake to finish. So activate the king. Don't forget about your king. Now h4, why not? That h4 was completely unnecessary. <laughs> All right, check. Ah, you have gone to e6. Come on, horrible technique. All right, then let me go here. And that's going to be the end of it. That's it. That's it. No respect. At this point, they should be resigning this, but they want us to show that we know what we're doing. Okay, and then this is just checkmate. All right, guys, so this is going to be the 1800 level. So I'm glad that... I chose 1800 and not 1500 quickly. If I take a look at, okay, so they're checking for mistakes now. Um, I'm pretty sure that we made some blunders, maybe five or, five or 10. <laughs> but okay, now look, zero mistakes, zero blunders, no missed wins. So game review, let's take a look here. All right, so not bad, 92% accuracy. We had mistakes, of course. So let me just go, go quickly, guys, over the opening uh, mainly. So take a look. See, taking on d5, the engine didn't like it. The engine, or rather, would rather have us go to d4, like I told you, more like a Catalan position. But what we learned is the English opening. So I'm just going to take, and then bishop g2, I'm fine. d3, they finally did d4. And then we go knight e4. And here, look, if I show you the evaluation that the engine is giving us, it says negative 0.41. Guys, this is roughly equal. And many people are going to say, why would you play this variation if it doesn't give you an advantage? Well, I've told you so many times throughout the course that to me, it is more important to be my elements, to know my positions than 
to get into a position that is better according to the engine, but I don't really know the typical plans and ideas. So here, knight takes, bishop takes. Look, they wanted us to take with the pawn, which is very interesting. You could take with the pawn. It looks bad because we get doubled pawns, but this pawn, you could always go e3, trade it for this guy, and you fix your pawn structure. So something to consider. I did bishop takes, and now this, this puts us as at 0.68. So f5. We go back to safety, and at this point, this is what I told you. My bishop went back and forth, but they're just moving pawns. They're not developing pieces. So bishop e6, knight f3, bishop b4, happy to just block with the bishop. It was not developed, and now queen d2. Look, all of a sudden, 0. 0.59, this is still roughly equal, guys. No advantage, no nothing. Just trying to come up with a plan for the middle game and the end game. So castle... I castled my king. Look at this. The engine didn't like either one of the castles. Instead, queen b4. Well, yeah, I guess just putting pressure on the weak pawn. Yeah. And look, this is something that, remember when the pawn was pushed to d4 in the first place? We gotta be careful with that. Of course, in this case, it made sense. But don't forget, the more we advance pawns, the harder it is to, to defend them. So, um, castle, c5 was played, and now b4. I'm happy to see that this move was the right move, because... I only came up with it thanks to the lesson we had, lesson 151, guys. I knew because of that lesson that I need to play on the queen side. So opening up lines for my rooks is all that I was looking for. So knight d7, take, queen f6, queen b4, this is good, give me the pawn. And simplification, this is a no-brainer, right? So knight takes f6, d4, bishop takes c4, knight e5, bishop takes d5, and g takes e4. So rook d8, let me just, just go quickly. This part should be pretty easy to finish. Bishop takes, simplification, we talked about it. I want to leave him with the bishop, which is not bad, but I feel like my knight is way better. So f3, rook b6, then uh, after a4, yep, happy to take another pawn. And it's hard to see the black pieces coming back from these. Here, I just wanted to activate my rook. They could not let me do that, so we simplify. And then this is just a thousand ways to win this this position guys e5 here look i gotta tell you i uh, i should have known better when i did this move i was just thinking of rook takes rook takes king takes play this king and pawns endgame that we should know by heart but only then only after i thought of the tactics <laughs> so there we go the end is just a pretty bad technique but it is what it is we got this game, guys. Okay, so first game is already done. Let me go back to play computer and let me find Mr. James. Okay, so 2300 player. I'm going to choose uh, the white pieces. I want to play the English opening and let's see how he plays against C4. I think he's a King's Indian defense player, so let's give it a try. Nice C3 and G6. No, no G6. So the same thing, all right? Guys, I'm a little bit... Uh, I mean, I will have liked to play the e4 variation but it is what it is i'm pretty sure that most of your games you're not gonna get what we covered so you gotta it's good that you're seeing this look after our last game after after our last evaluation i'll play d4 but hey this is all i know i'm going to play my d3 now d4 is in the air even though i could do queen a4 now let me go bishop d2 look just developing pieces that's it. Nothing extraordinary. Okay, so same thing that the 1800 engine did. We're getting it with the 2300. So now look, I could do 94 like I did before. If they take, we get doubled pawns, but eventually we're going to get to do e3, maybe. Or we could simply just go back and see what they're going to do. You know what? I just don't feel right about 94, especially since this rook. Look, before, my opponent had not even castled. This time, he's quickly developed this rook could even go to the e-file. So I'm going to just go back. It, it seems like a waste of a move, but I'm just looking to reroute my knight. What makes me feel better, or the compensation the compensation that I could get for this move, is that I provoked this d4, which is a little bit uh, of a compromise for the pawn structure. So I feel good about that. And also, whatever tempo I wasted with my knight, going back and forth, they're going to have to do something about the bishop as well. So let me just go back to b1, you see? Now, I'm going to castle. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, let me just castle. And, of course, I have to be careful with this pawn. Yep, they're putting pressure on it. Let me take the bishop now. 
If they had taken with a knight, I take over here, so they couldn't. And now I think it's time to do queen c2. So guys, queen c2, co controlling, defending both pawns, but also getting my queen on the c file. Don't forget, we talked about the importance of that uh, of that file on the Sicilian and the English opening. Okay, so time to develop by knight. So where should I go with it? Where should I go with it? Forget about going to d2, you lose the pawn. Now a3 before, interesting, but nah, I don't feel like it. All right, let me just go knight a3, guys. That's it. Okay, should I go to c4, b5, a3. Mm -hmm. How about queen c4? No, pawn, pawn, pawn. Okay, this pawn is going to be a headache, so I'm, I better find a way to do bishop f3 or, or something like that. Hmm. Okay, let me go rookie 1. Guys, this is a little bit painful, but it's necessary. Okay, so now knight g5, bishop d5. These are candidate moves. I just don't like that. How about knight c4 now? Yeah, I'm going to go knight c4. Let's go knight c4. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Rook c1. Hmm. All right, guys. So now, look, this is a good moment to take our time. Don't forget, we're playing a 2300 engine. We have to be very, very careful with what we do next. So this queen is hanging over here. Also, my queen is hanging. I need to be careful with moves like b5. So how about a3, b5, b4? Yeah, why not? So I'm just doing a3 to kick the queen out. All right, they don't want me to do that. Respect. <laughs> Let's respect. Okay, so rook c1, I just don't want my queen to remain hanging. And now, is there any kind of tactic here? 95, queen takes, rook takes. Hmm, it almost works. It almost works. 95, hitting the queen. They take. I don't have any in-between moves, so I have to take back. Knight takes, knight takes, bishop b3, rook c5. And then b6, rook b5, bishop b3, I mean bishop a4. Nope, it just doesn't work. All right, so what to do? Pretend you're playing this game while you're doing this position. What would you do in this position? Now, there are a few candidate moves here that are a little bit odd, but we have to consider them. We cannot just ignore moves, guys. And those moves are king f1 is one move that comes to mind, just bringing the king closer also defending that e2 pawn, but also what about queen d2? Just putting pressure on a5, but also getting my rook open to hit the queen. Then I was ready to do knight e5. Now, of course, they know what they're doing, so they got out of the way, everything is under control, but now I'm going to go ahead and just double up my rooks on the c file. Again, lesson 151, we learned we should be focusing on opening up lines on that part of the board. So how about... Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, let me just go rook c1. My opponent is trying to do something on the king side. I'm not 100% sure what it is. Knight g5 is always in the air, but I don't think we're ready for it. Now, I like rook c5 at some point, but we're just not ready. Now, b4, pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, we got... Nah, nah, nah. Now, what could be a nice way to make progress? Like, I already have my pieces pretty active. This bishop is ready to act on this diagonal. I just need my knight to get out of the way. Um, h4, don't forget we talked about when we played the English that we could play on both sides of the board. h4, I like it because if they take, well, they open up the king. They make f4 available for my queen. But if they advance, they sort of seal the, the king side. So let me give it a try. And, hmm. Okay, taking is going to open up lines towards my own king. So I don't think that's what I want. But it could allow me to do a four takes. Hmm. Now a four, they could take. A four, they could take. Pawn takes. Hmm. I think it's the night before is coming afterwards. <laughs> How about b three? <laughs> Okay, how about before now? How about before? All right, let me take here first, just create something here for the queen to be concerned with. 
And now we could do something here before just trying to to distract that queen. So a4, uh, b4, pawn takes, a4 after just to get this pawn. Does that make any sense? Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, guys, I'm going to go for it. If we die, we die. <laughs> but anyhow, any lines that we open towards the over here is going to be good for my pieces. I'm just ready to go uh, crashing and opening up lines to get those pawns. And when this bishop gets open, it's just going to be overwhelming. Even if we drop a pawn for it, it's going to make sense. Okay, so they just don't want to give me a break. So uh, what can we do? Knight, knight a3? Okay, so let me just go, let me just go knight a3, see what they're going to do. Okay. I'm begging them to take, they took, and now, okay, what did he say? He said, okay, let's get that girl off the board. And guys, one more time, we get to an end game. So important that you go over lesson 151. I know I've said it like 20 times, but it's really, really important. Okay, bishop d5, so many things hanging. Look, so many things hanging, and this bishop is just defending many of them. So if I could get rid of the bishops, it's just going to make a lot of sense. Oop, this is, no, it's not. Okay, so let me go knight okay let me go knight b5 i don't see any danger ah that's the danger remember king f1 that's the move i didn't see and now everything falls okay so let me just go here just to remove the bishops and they just don't care about the bishops so i'm gonna do it now now i take this pawn and guess what rook c rook c8 is coming Oof. okay guys look this is the, the, the golden question for you. Would you rather take another pawn and get ready for a very powerful move here? Or would you rather go with, the, with both rooks to the 7th rank? Don't forget, rooks like to be on open files to be able to penetrate and attack. But more than that, they are happier on the 7th rank, like this guy. But more than that, they are happier when they're doubled on the 7th rank. So this has to be a very powerful move. So I'm going to go rook 7. Hmm check no 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 96 what's the way to go okay let me go check the king is now <laughs> calm down my guy i can see him saying that actually in a real game um what could we do what could we do hmm. what could we do okay let's think about this we're up upon but more importantly his king's safety is just in trouble so look we need tactics. We need tactics now to be really, to find those tactics. Tactics have to be in the air. I like the idea of knight f5, knight h6, but it's just not safe. Now, I don't want to just go for a pawn. That just cannot be right. Okay, let me try, let me try this. Okay, I thought they were going to go back, but the answer is no. So now we could go, now we could go f5. Okay, knight f5. Look, again, we keep ignoring the pawn because all we need is pieces to attack that king. That's it. Okay, so what if I just take now? Okay, knight c5 is going to come after. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come after that move. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, I guess that works. So I'm thinking knight c5, I go rook b6 and then rook h6. Okay, going up, I don't think I'm going to be in trouble. Okay, so now I get to go here. And now I'm throwing checkmate into moves. Check, and then mate. Nope. They know better than that. They just know better. How about d4, d5? Nope. Now this, forget about it. Okay, guys, very interesting position. Two knights, two rooks. We got an extra pawn, which we could just advance. That's always a possibility. Or how about knight c7? Okay, let me go just knight c7, but then, yeah, let me go knight c7. Why not? Oh, come on. It's just a blunder. That's just a blunder. Come on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, forget about it, guys. I don't think we're going to make anything work here. Not anymore. I'm going to resign here, not to make this longer unnecessarily. And let's take a look at the evaluation up to this point. Because all I want you to see is the opening in action. So this horrible blunder of mine, is not, it has nothing to do with what we learned on lesson 152, I believe. So 
Okay, so look, this time two blunders. <laughs> so let's take a look at this. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, that one hurt. That one hurt. Now, of course, if you're doing these exercises, if you're practicing against the engine, try to just pretend this is a real tournament game. Get enough time. If you have a physical chessboard next to you, set it up. It's going to help you. Okay, so let's see. Uh, opening, we got here um, D5. We took, this time, the engine like taking on D5. Who understands the engine? <laughs> now, D3, bishop B4, bishop D2. I want to see if my knight B1 move actually made any sense. Knight F3. And at this point, we are equal, completely equal. Nothing too crazy. D4 and then knight b1. Look, the engine didn't like it. Knight b5 was the move, just uh, putting pressure on d4 at the same time. So queen e7. Okay, my opponent did not do the best move either. So castle, rook e8, take on b4, and then queen c2. I did not want to compromise my rook so early, but I had to do it anyways at the, at the end. So bishop d7, knight a3, just developing my pieces rook d8, and then rook e1. Here, still completely equal. Bishop e6, knight c4, all of this. I'm happy that we did it. a3, glad to see that move uh, to be okay. Then a5, rook c1, h6, and then queen d2. Okay, this move is another one that I did it, and it made sense to me. I was also considering, if you remember, king f1, which I should have done at some point. <laughs> but anyhow, queen b5, Rook c2, okay, this plan, I liked it so much, they didn't like it. b3, offering the pawn for free, okay, we had the right idea, right intention, but we did not do it. So g5 was a blunder, I should have done h4, which I did later, so I don't feel that bad about, about that. h4, there you go, and at this point, look, 1.41, guys. So we took, good, and then b4, oof, that's a mistake. And look, the engine wanted me to do 91, come on. <laughs> so they took, take... King h8, that was a mistake. Uh, queen b4 was a better move. It seems to be safe. I was happy to see them do that because then my rooks would get active, but it, it seems to be safe. Then knight a3, take, take, and then rook c7. Guys, look, this is plus 220. So the opening got us to the middle game. What we learned on, one, on lesson 151 got us through the middle game to the end game. And we are on to a very nice game. Of course, bishop d5, knight b5, Hmm, what did I miss here? Rook b1, knight a6, rook c2. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So simply, I just dropped the pawn. So rook b1, because I'm hitting the knight, and they cannot take the pawn, right? But at some point, I should have taken care of that pawn. So knight b5, I was so happy to go after that pawn, but it just didn't make sense. So even losing the pawn, we're still ahead by 127. We take the pawn, blunder, Give me the bishop, and now this is 563. How could we lose this game? Okay, so look, here I was debating, should I take the pawn and then rook c8, or should I go to the seventh rank? We got it right. Then check, knight f5. This is just great. It's just great. Look, 540, then rook b6. I'm happy about this. And then this is just the blunder. We went from 540 to negative 321 completely losing the game so guys there you go i could have continued hoping for my opponent to make a blunder but that's not the point of this lesson it's more for you to see a little bit more of the english in action and guys don't get frustrated if you don't get exactly what we covered because that's going to be the case for many of the openings like i always tell you the important thing is for you to make it to the middle game and then know the typical position types typical plans in the middle games and the end game so with that said let me know in the comments if you think these kind of videos could be useful to do it more often or if we just forget about them continue with what we were doing before anyhow let me know how it's going with your english opening did you try it did you not are you getting the same positions that we talked about or something completely different just let me know guys and i will see you on our next lesson